The initial sharing pop-up window is the simplest version of sharing. You can type a user's name or email address that you plan to share this file with. To the right of their names, you see a pencil with a drop-down arrow. These are the permissions for these users on this file. Your options are can edit, can comment, can view. The power of collaboration is in can edit. That means these users can work with you in real time on this file. They can make changes and give you feedback. They can basically do anything you can. Can comment is a little bit more restrictive. They can't touch the main part of the file, but they can add comments that will appear as little speech bubbles, almost a conversation, in the right margin. Can view means these users can only see this file. They can't actually make any changes or add anything to it. Once you've selected the permissions you want this group to have, you usually type a little note that they will receive in an email. Make sure the Notify People box is checked and click Send. If this is the only way you ever experience sharing in Google Drive, get ready to be excited because the power of sharing in Google Drive is actually in the advanced section in this bottom right corner. The advanced sharing permissions pop-up window gives you lots of details and control about the permissions related to this Google file. At the top, notice the URL that is automatically highlighted so you can easily copy it. This is the web address for your file. Think of it as the address to your house on a street. This is the address for this file on the internet. Beneath the URL to share this file, notice it has at the top the global sharing permissions. Currently, this file is set to specific people can access. We will come back to this global setting, specific people can access, and this change button in just a moment. But glance underneath and notice that all the individual users who have been invited via email are listed here. I can easily control each individual permission using their drop-down menu. I can also remove a colleague by clicking the X. And some people don't notice this, but if you hover on a user this has been shared with, you get a little clock. When you click on that clock, it allows you to set an expiration date on their sharing permissions. This is useful for things like grants when you want input, feedback, and revisions, but have to cut off at a certain date. I can even add more people and set their sharing permissions as I go if I'd like to keep adding individual email addresses. If this file is something that's just small for a few people to share and work on, this is the way to go, individual email addresses. However, if this is a file I want shared with an entire school, or perhaps I want parents to be able to view it and they're outside of our district domain, that's where I return to this global file settings. It says specific people can access and I can see those specific people, but I can change that. So I'm going to click the word change. Remember, these are your global settings for this file, and they work from the broadest at the top to the most narrow and limited at the bottom. The top option, public on the web, means this file is literally public on the internet. Someone could search Google, and while it might not be the first 10, 100, or even 1,000th search result, it's out there and it's public. Anyone with the link means they do not have to be logged into any specific Google or school account. If they have a link to click on, whether that's from an email or a button on a website, they can get to this file. For our district purposes, you see two other tiers as we narrow down. On Edmond Public Schools means it's publicly available for anyone with an Edmond Schools account. That's students and teachers. These users would not need a link or a button to click on. They would be able to search and potentially find this file. A little bit more restricted is anyone at Edmond Public Schools with the link, meaning they would have to have something to click to get them to this file, such as a link in an email or a button on a website. But once they clicked that, they would be able to view or edit however we set our sharing permissions. And then finally, the most restrictive is only those specific people I had listed in the previous pop-up window. So let's say 
I want anyone with the link because I want parents and some community members to see this flyer we're working on. Underneath the selection options for your global permissions, you set what those permissions can do. Can view is the default, but you could say anyone who clicks on this link has editing rights to this exact file. Most of the time, you leave it as can view, so anyone who clicks on this link can view this file. Now you notice my web address for my file is still at the top. My global permissions reflect the changes we made, and it still acknowledges that these two people have special access. One can comment and one can edit. The last thing that's pretty cool in the advanced pop-up window are the bottom two checkboxes. You can decide that other people who are editors, in this case PD Teacher 4, are able or unable to add other editors. Often you don't mind if they add a colleague to continue collaborating with this group, but sometimes you need a closed club with pretty tight restrictions, so that box might be useful to know about. You can also disable people's ability to make a copy of your file or print it. Some people use this for copyright issues. They want to own the intellectual property. Oftentimes people use this, especially in education, when they have something like a meeting agenda that's still in draft mode. They want people to be able to view the draft of the agenda, but they don't want anybody printing it before it's finalized because then there's potential for lots of out-of-date versions of the agenda. The default for both of these boxes is to be unchecked, so be aware they are there and use them as needed. When you click Done, your advanced sharing permission settings will be saved.